Welcome to beautiful Stockholm, Sweden. In this episode, we're going to be seeing a very cool historical artifact. Of course, like always, we're going to be eating some delicious traditional food. So for the next 48 hours, we're going to be exploring this beautiful city and we can't wait to take you on this journey with us. So let's start this video from the beginning. Good morning everyone, we arrived in beautiful Stockholm late last night, we picked up our electric car rental, more on that later, probably the next episode because we're going to be doing a road trip up north, but right now we're ready to go explore the city and more specifically, where are we going Olivia? Right now we are going to go somewhere that I've been hoping to go to for quite a long time, the Skansen Museum, it's the oldest and I think one of the biggest open air museums in the world where we will learn more about Swedish history throughout the years. Alright, there's a bit of a change of plans because after further looking to the reviews for Skansen, it's a museum that is worth to spend a lot of time in because it's an open air museum. So people are saying like even three hours is not enough. And I don't think we're gonna spend three, four hours there because we wanna see the rest of the city and this is our only full day here, so we wanna take advantage of it. If you go to one museum here in Stockholm, a lot of locals rec recommend go to Vasa. So I think we should probably better dedicate our time to Vasa. Friends about to come and uh, let's go explore some Viking history. The station actually reminds me a lot of uh, the, Denmark. The Copenhagen. Yeah, yeah. I feel like this is more confusing than the tube system in uh, London. We've been completely lost. After about six minutes of being lost down there, we finally found the exit. <laughs> Made it to more of a central area now. It's not like the exact center, but we've decided to walk, so now we've got a 30 minute walk to the museum. Let's see what we can discover along the way. We have this like really big football table. A board game area too. All right, it's no secret. Scandinavian countries are really expensive and we've definitely felt it already. What I'd like to do, we did this in Denmark. Let's do the Starbucks challenge. So let's go in and see how much a latte is. In Denmark, in the middle of the city, it was eight euro, I believe. Oh, yeah. Do you think it's gonna be more or less? I think it's gonna be around the same or a little less. I'm gonna say it's gonna be 650 kronas. Yeah, I'm saying 720. Okay, that was actually a lot cheaper. And like for an iced latte, a dull one, it was like five euro. Oh, that's not bad. So that's pretty good. That's kind of like American and UK prices. Yeah, yeah. I don't think Sweden's the most no. expensive Scandinavian. I think Denmark and Norway are like yeah. the top two. impression so far after like being in the center for like an hour like I'm really liking what I'm seeing and feeling the vibes are really good like, there's so much green integrated into the city everything's so beautiful modern and old perfectly intermingled together it's it's really cool I wish we had more time here I keep saying I wish we were staying here for a week anyway so now we're gonna walk through this park and continue on to our route Follow the signs to the museum. I love when there's signs. I never thought I would be that person yet. Let's go. Also, I gotta say, like when we got out of the hotel, we felt really cold. So we, I kind of regretted my shorts and t-shirt choice. But walking through the city when the sun is out, it's really, really hot. And it makes sense because we're so far north in the summer. However, it's only 68 degrees and like we're sweating, we're struggling. I was not expecting that. I think we're gonna get a sunburn. <laughs> We're almost at the museum and we come across a little old-fashioned licorice stand 
and we thought we had to try it. And they're very long, they're quite a few collection. But we went with the classic raspberry. It looks very fun and fruity. So let's see. It's nice. It definitely, mm, mm. The flavor kind of reminds me of Swedish fish. Oh, so okay. So Swedish fish must be the type of like licorice. Yeah, huh. It's really nice, so it's not too sweet. And how much was this, Olivia? Four euros. Mmm. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, that's nice. You think we're not gonna be able to eat the whole thing? <laughs> I'm ready to finish it all. I'm hungry. Mm. Good choice. Oh my god, look at the automatic lawnmower. There's another one! I want to just sit in this grass. There's I another know. person, so it must be allowed. <sighs> Green grass. <laughs> it looks so perfect. Oh my god, yeah, coming from Greece, this much green, like that. It's really it's green amazing. Grass. I feel like my eyes have not seen green for months. Well, I haven't left Greece since April, so. A little water break before we go into the museum. We're right outside. Uh, the ship behind me, Vasa, it's a 17th century warship. The story behind it is really, really interesting. It was commissioned and built by one of the most favorite kings here in Sweden, Adolf Gustav. Back in the 1600s, Sweden was at war with Poland and Lithuania, and this ship was supposed to go actually by the source of Gdansk and join the fight, but as luck would have it, or maybe bad engineering, and on a Sunday morning in 1628, it went on a sail with over 300 people on board, and it started out really nice coming out of the port, and then all of a sudden there was a big gust of air, and it started swaying like over one side and it, then it was fine it went a little more and then another big gust of air and what ended up happening they had the cannon ports open and because of the bad engineering and the center of gravity of the ship was really bad the water started rushing in through the ports people today say that if the ports were closed maybe the ship would have been saved and the ship from there quickly sunk but to me what's the most impressive thing about this is they pulled the ship out in the 1960s and it is so so well preserved you can see so much of the detail the only thing is it has lost a lot of its color and it's quite different than what it looked back then but what we learned is because the baltic has brackish water and it doesn't have much salt that ruins the wood also the baltic doesn't have shipworm that eats the wood so we saw an exhibit of a danish ship down by Gothenburg that was sunk versus a piece of wood from this ship and you can obviously see how much more preserved the wood from this ship is versus the other one. So we're learning about the ship and its history through the audio guide and actually the wood that makes up the ship was sourced from different countries in the region, such as Holland and Latvia. Speaking about the decorations and the art and the carvings, there's actually over 500 different sculptures and they call them ornaments on the ship, which even though it's a big ship, that's a lot of art. stairs and see it from the upper level. I really like how you can see the ship from many different levels so you can get a whole picture.
sucks if you're really tall. Most people were like quite tall. I just gotta say they've done a really good job with the museum. We've gone through all the floors and it's impossible to show you everything because this entire video would be about the Vasa Museum. After taking in the impressive Vasa, we started to wonder how did they recover such a massive ship from the depths of the sea? Well, they had to train Navy divers to dig massive tunnels underneath the ship. It took them two years to dig six tunnels and pass six inches of steel wire through each one. Once that was accomplished, they were able to slowly drag and lift the ship with the help of the ships that the steel wires were tied to. All right, now that we saw everything, let's grab the backpack from the lockers. What do you say? Should we go have some Swedish meatballs? I know it's uh, we had it before when we were in Malmo, but it's so good. I would like to have that again. to any museums. Uh, quite a few of the metro stations in Stockholm are pretty cool and this one's a cool example. haven't put walls in like you can see the rock underground we went so far down these escalators were one of some of the longest escalators we've gone to and there's still phone service oh maybe they have something underneath why don't more stations do that really cute, well-reviewed place right by the water for us to go eat. It seems like we're in a very local area, seeing a lot of locals, like drinking their beer, enjoying the sun. You can tell people really savor the sun <laughs> since it's uh, not as often as, as an occurrence as it is in the Mediterranean. Come to the place we've been looking for. Yeah, you did well, girl. Wow, good find, Olivia. Good oh, baby cheers. <laughs> ah, thank you so much. Something to buy, the Wow. I got a Caesar salad with shrimp. And I really like here in the Nordic countries and probably otherwise other places too, but they have these little tiny shrimps. I like that there's pickled onion and Maria's looks really good too. It looks like a really hearty salad and there's a good amount of shrimp too, which I was worried there wouldn't be. There is, and a good amount of dressing. Yeah. It's, like, it's like a really thick dressing too. It's really nice. It's pretty much exactly how you'd expect, but the taste of the red and the pickled onion with the dress salad is really nice. And I love anything pickled, vinegary. And it's really nice with little shrimps instead of like chicken and it adds to the whole Nordic experience. What you get, Maria? I got the Swedish meatballs. I had them in Malmo and they were like amazing. Why not have them again? So it basically has some mashed potatoes, creamy gravy with the meatballs, pickled um, cucumber, and lingonberries. All right, let's see. Oh, nice. It's well cooked, which I'm happy about. I'm gonna get a little bit of everything. It's really nice. The combination of all the flavors is so good. Mm, I really like the gravy. I like how this one's a bit creamy. I, I think it depends who makes it. Some can be creamy, some can be without any cream or milk. We're gonna get in this, and we'll see you after this. Let me offer. All right, I come bearing Fika. 
Olivia told me to surprise her with... Oh, this is exactly what I wanted. And I got some pecan pie. I've never seen this kind of pecan pie before. Coffee's included in such a big coffee culture, I guess. Yeah, coffee's free everywhere. Not everywhere, but our hotel in here, it's free. Um, look at this. It looks really delicious. And they asked me, do you want cream? And I was like, Olivia wants cream for sure. Oh, that's dense. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, the coffee's amazing. They got very dense, but the flavors are so nice. Is it like caramel on top? The caramel is amazing. <laughs> amazing. It's like this milky caramel. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good. All right, um, we really don't want to leave this spot. It's so nice hearing the water, just having the sun, the breeze, and the rocking of the platform that originally scared us that we were having like vertigo or something. But I think we should start heading back at the hotel. We're gonna have an early morning tomorrow to go explore the old city of Stockholm and a little more of the city. And then we're going to start a road trip to the Swedish Lapland. And so we'll see you tomorrow morning. Is it? Well, we can do one more tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, god. oh my god. Really I just, oh, oh my god. I wasn't I, expecting I, it to oh move. God, and I got so dizzy. Oh, maybe I thought that was actually dying. <laughs> like, I didn't even, there was nothing else that went through my mind except for it's happening. <laughs> you knew this was coming. And from a major up to be a hypochondriac, but you're actually going. No 